Hey, what's up guys? Chris here, back with another video. So today, I want to talk a little bit about a new camera that was just announced, the Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II. Now, uh, one of the things I want to talk about is we'll get into like the price and specs of this thing and then we'll kind of change, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the uh, differences between the X-T30 Mark II and the X-T30 Mark I. Now, to get started, I, it seems to me that right now in the, in the camera industry, there's a lot of camera companies that are kind of creating the same camera over and over again. Um, <clears throat> there's not a lot of difference in this camera. We'll, we'll discuss the differences that I've seen so far, kind of just going back and forth between the two. But it seems to me that they're, you know, you look at the M50, M50 Mark II, Sony, a, you know, ZV-10 is kind of very similar to the A6000 series of cameras. Um, this camera here, the X-T30 and X-T30 Mark II aren't all that different from each other. So uh, we'll get into the differences, different, you know, similarities and stuff like that. But uh, uh, it just seems like a lot of these companies are just trying to kind of re-spark interest in the cameras, I, I assume. That's my kind of thought process on it. They're just trying to re-spark re interest. It is what it is. All right, so first off, uh, one of the key differences, we'll go, we'll go into the differences between the two cameras first, and then we'll go down the spec range. Um, the key differences right off the bat, that this year there's only the black and the silver version. Uh, there is no gray version like they had in the past. They had, a, they had three different versions of the X-T30 uh, color uh, ways. Uh, there was a, you know, this, the, the silver, the black, and then there was a gray. Uh, but it doesn't look like there's going to be a gray version this year, which is, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the main kit lens that they're going to have with this is the 15 to 45, and you can also get this with the 18 to 55. Uh, you got 899.95 for the body alone. Uh, if you want the 15 to 45 kit lens, it's going to be 999. And if you want the 18 to 55, it's going to be uh, 1,300 bucks, basically. Uh, so let's get into the differences real quick. So I only came up with three different things that I could see other than the color ways that were different. Uh, starting out, uh, continuous shooting. The buffer now for JPEG has changed from 90 to 458. So you can get 458 JPEGs uh, with eight, eight, eight frames per second buffer. So that's, uh, you know, that's a significant uh, difference, um, you know, if you're into that. And it, it's the same with RAW. So if you're shooting RAW, it's still only 18. But if you are shooting JPEGs, which I like to think that a lot of people that are buying this camera are shooting JPEGs, you know, it is what it is. Um, then the next thing is video. Um, now this is the only like smaller kind of, you know, not flagship level camera that I can think of that you can shoot 10 bit 422 external. Uh, you know, uh, most of these other cameras that are out here that are, are, um, you know, not the, you know, the highest end version. Now internal it's, it's four to zero 10 bit, I believe, because you can ship to 200 megabits per second on this uh, internal, which is more than most other cameras in its class can do, which is more than all of the cameras in its class can do. Uh, but also in the uh, video, you know, you can shoot 10 bit into external. You could do that on the X-T30 Mark I as well, but you can also do that on the X-T30 Mark II. But one of the things is, is the X-T30 Mark one had a 10 minute record limit and now you have a 30 minute record limit. So that's uh, still kind of a bummer um, because well, most of the cameras in its class, like I, a matter of fact, I'm shooting on the Sony ZV E10 right now. Um, this has unlimited recording. As long as you can fill up your buff or fill up your, you have a long enough, uh, S, big enough SD card, you can continuously record all day if you wanted to. Yeah, you, you can power supply it and you can, you have a big enough SD card, you could re theoretically record all day, but with this uh, uh, X-T30 Mark II, there's only a 30 minute um, record limit, but it's a little bit definitely better than what it is, was before with the 10 minute record limit. Um, and then the weight of the camera is slightly lighter. Now this is not really anything to write home about. Um, the weight of the body alone with the battery and SD card is 378 grams compared to 383 grams. So there's a five gram difference uh, in weight. Now those are the only three things minus the colorways that I could see. So we'll go over some of the specs real quick. Obviously it's a, a, a 26 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. It does have the X-Trans uh, CMOS or BSI, it's BSI sensor, backside illuminated CMOS 4 uh, sensor, uh, X-Trans 4 sensor, 
Uh, so it's the same sensor that was in the last version of the um, same ones in the XT4, uh, same as in XT3. So it's the same se sensor basically, well, not basically. Uh, there is no IBIS, there is no image in-body image stabilization or electronic stabilization, so no uh, stabilization of any kind. ISO ranges from 80 to 51,200 in the extended version. Uh, shutter speeds, one four thousandth of a second up to with the uh, mechanical electronic shutter, one thirty two thousandth of a second with the electronic shutter. Um, let me see. Again, the 458 frames compared to the 90. Uh, this has DCI 4K as well, folks. That's not something that what many, that any camera in its in its class, and and a lot of cameras that above its class don't have is DCI 4K. So that's the 4096 by 2160, and you can do that up to 30, up to 60 frames per second. Yep, you can do that up to 60. So that is another difference I didn't realize. You can shoot 4K DCI 4K at 60 frames per second, which you could not do that on the you could uh, went up to 30 on the other one on the XT30. Um, but that's not showing in regular 4K, uh, 3840 by 2160, it says still up to 30 frames per second. So you can get DCI 4K at 60, regular standard 4K uh, at, uh, at 30. You can get 2K video up to 60 frames per second and then Full HD up to 60, sorry, 120 frames per second. So you can get slow motion video out of this again, but there's no stabilization of any kind. So, you know, you're going to be kind of limited at that. Um, but again, <clears throat> 420, 10-bit, uh, DCI 4K up to 30 frames per second, which again, it's a 10-bit, which no other camera in this class does that. You do have a 30-minute time limit in DCI 4K as well as every other shooting mode, so 2K, 4K, doesn't matter. You have a 30 minute time limit. Um, again, it's a external microphone. It is a 2.5 millimeter microphone. I don't understand why Panasonic, or why Fujifilm keeps doing this with their kind of lower end cameras. I imagine that in the box you'll have an adapter like they've been putting in a lot of their cameras. Uh, but why bother putting the adapter in when you can just put a 3.5 millimeter? I can't believe it's that much more expensive. You got 425 phase detect autofocus points and the same uh, monitor on the back. It's the three inch 1.04 million dot uh, resolution, same EVF uh, and the same like interface. It's, it's basically the same camera. You got the same battery. Um, yeah. Who do I recommend this camera for? Who, who in my opinion is it for? Uh, in my opinion, this camera is for uh, street photographers. Uh, to be honest with you, if I was gonna get really into street photography, which I'm not, I don't really do any of that. I don't carry, I carry a camera because I wanna go hiking or something like that, you know? Like, that's why I bought the ZV-E10 is for more hiking than, than anything. Um, but I bought that camera. If, if I were to get into like street photography, I think that the X-T30 camera line, X-T20, X-T10, X-T30 Mark II, these cameras are like the premier, in my opinion, with camera, with uh, street photography, because, you know, there's a lot that you can do in camera, you know, as far as the picture profiles and things of that nature, that would alleviate pretty much everything you have to do in post, or, you know, in some situations, potentially almost anything you'd want to do in post. Um, not in every situation, obviously, but, you know, uh, there's a lot you can do in camera to kind of either completely eliminate posts or alleviate a lot of pressure on your post processing. So if you're trying to, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you're making the best photos possible. Uh, you know, it is what it is, but with all the picture profiles and stuff like that, I mean, Fujifilm cameras, some of the lenses are just so beautiful, like so sharp lenses. Um, yeah. I have an X-T4 over here. You can't see it, but it's over there. Uh, and I love that camera. I never want to get rid of it again. And man, but maybe I would pair you know, with like one of the like the new 27 millimeter lens that just came out. It's kind of interesting to me, um, but it seems to be sold out everywhere. So, you know, it is what it is. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A little overview, um, preview, if you will, of the Sony or the Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.